Welcome everyone, this is Future Nathan after the episode. This is my recording session for today. I wanted to give you a brief insight into that as well. I was so scared to upload the first episode of this project, but you guys have responded so well. I'm so grateful for that, for your likes, for your suggestions and comments. This made me actually put this video up already today instead of in a week. So keep on giving me your likes. You can see that I put a lot of efforts into my episodes. These are all the cuts, for instance, just for this 15 minute video, which is ahead of us. But let's not waste any more time and get into the episode. And thank you again so much for your support. Enjoy. Okay, guys, before we get to business, there's two comments I want to say something about. Namely, it has been suggested to actually generate the tiles in one go using a for loop. This has the advantage that all the tiles are being generated in one frame. And I actually tested this method out. What I don't like about it is that the game will freeze for a second before all the tiles are being generated. With the method we have established the previous episode, we will be able to actually add a loading progression during which a lot will happen and on slower computers this might be a little bit of a strain. And if the game will slow down at this point, the user will know because the progression bar will continue a lot slower. And once the tile generation is done, it means also all the world generation is done and we can go to the actual game and also make sure that the game won't lag anymore and also for slower computers. Related to that idea, we could also draw the tiles instead of placing objects, which of course would also make sure that we have a smoother gameplay. But again, I have plans with these tile sets, something which will happen during the tile generation and after it is done we can still think about actually drawing them instead of placing objects and slowing down the game. Anyways, if we have a look at what we have so far by actually starting up the game, we have our tile generation as per usual, we have our instances and tiles numbers. Today we're gonna use these numbers in order order to add a loading bar, which in the future we can use to add a loading screen. Instead of actually seeing the tile generation, we want to have something else visible. Things such as a loading bar will of course go into our object heart. We want to make sure that we choose the draw GUI event and we're gonna add another script. This script right here we're gonna name draw loading bar. Now in here we're gonna do something special, a really nice function of GameMaker which is to draw a health bar. In order to do so we want to use the command draw health bar, really easy. But there are quite a few conditions to it as you can see. We need an x1, x2, y1, y2 and so on position. So let's actually create some variables for that. I'm just gonna go with x1, y1, x2, y2. Then we are gonna need an amount. The amount of course we already have stored in a global variable, namely global.tilecount if you remember from the previous episode. Next up we're gonna need a background color and I'm just gonna make this C gray for the time being. I don't really care. We will stylize this uh, later on. The min color is going to be C red. So if the loading bar has not progressed a lot yet and the max color is going to be C green if it is at full. The direction is going to be zero. That's from the left to the right. And the last two statements are to show the background color and also to show the border. And I want to display both of them for the time being. Why not? Next up, we're also going to draw a text into the loading bar so that we know at how much percentage we are. We're also gonna do that at X1 and Y1 for the time being. And we are gonna have a text called generate world or maybe generating world would be more appropriate. Anyways, we're gonna close this off, go on to the next line and here we are going to draw the actual percentage. Also at x1, y1 plus 20, so it's below the generating world text. And last but not least, we're gonna use a local variable. Let's do load percentage. Of course, now we have to define all of these variables. We do not know what those are. And of course, those are the positions we want the loading bar to be displayed. Now for the time being I want my loading bar to be in the dead center of the screen. For our code that means we want to calculate these numbers directly. So let's define x1 which is going to be view w port 
of the view 0 divided by 2. This will equal in the center and of course we don't want to start at the center with the upper left corner of the loading bar. We want to start a little bit off the center to the left. So we're gonna do let's say one tile size. Let's actually do two tile sizes. So now the starting point of x will be in the center minus two tile sizes. We're gonna do the same for y, namely view h port of zero divided by two minus global dot tile size. I think I want the loading bar to be a little bit thinner than it is wide. So we're gonna do divided by two. So the loading bar is gonna have a height of one tile size because right now we're adding half a tile size, but we're also gonna add half a tile size below the center of the screen. So let's do X2, which is gonna be view W port of zero divided by two. And this time we're gonna have to do the opposite, by adding two tile sizes times two. Same thing with Y2, we want that to be the view H port of zero divided by two plus global dot tile size divided by two. Now we have already all of these variables defined. We of course also need to define the load percentage and we are also gonna need yet another variable which we're gonna define right here called tile amount. So this is gonna be the overall tile amount. We already know that this is 2500, but of course the user can decide if it is so. So we will have to make this adjustable through this variable. So let's set that equal to the room width divided by global tile size. This will equal in 50 at the moment because the room width is 3200 and the tile size is 64. But maybe the player wants a larger room and in case he wants that we will make sure that we actually get the correct amount of tiles. We want to multiply this with of course the room height divided by global tile size. Now this essentially is the length multiplied by the height of the board in tile sizes. So we know the exact amount of tiles we actually should have on the board. Now with the load percentage, this is of course basic mathematics. You can divide 100 through the tile amount so 2,500 tiles would be 100% and we have to multiply it with the global dot tile count. The tile count of course is how many tiles we have already placed, if you remember from the previous episode. All right, looking at the code, there's two more things I want to change. First of all, I want to include this in an if statement and namely if the global tile generation equals true, only then I want to display the loading bar. Otherwise, we will not get rid of it. And of course, that's something we don't want. And also reading through this, I have seen a mistake. Namely, of course, we don't want the global tile count as our indicator for how much the loading bar should be displaying. We want the load percentage, which we calculated right here. So let's add that load percentage. And now we should be ready to test out the game. So let's see how that actually feels like. Come on game, do it. And oh yeah, it's beautiful. It's still too huge, too large in my opinion, but it seems to be working and it also disappears. Let's actually look at that again. It went a little bit fast. Yeah, I think it is exactly doing what I wanted it to do, isn't it? Cool, so that was actually easier than I thought. Okay, so then let's continue with the next topic for today's episode, which is placing down a bunch of trees randomly. Before we actually add at the trees, I want to give the terrain a little bit more of a variety. So within the properties of our grass tile set, we are going to edit that. We are going to remove this border again. This was only temporary so that we were able to see the different tiles, but we're going to achieve this differently by adding another image and we're going to color this with a slightly different color grass texture. Now this grass tile set will be developing incredibly. There's going to be at least about 16 to 20 images if I'm not mistaken. We will have to manage these all. For right now we're just going to manage two. So now that we have two textures within this sprite we will have to make sure that the image actually stays still because it will always move between the two images. So if we test the game rather quickly we will be able to see that yeah this is just a chaos and we don't really want that. What we want is to go inside of the properties of the grass tile set, add a create event and we're just gonna set a variable called image speed 
equals zero. We're just gonna set it like that. We don't even do it in a script just for the time being. This will make sure that it doesn't flicker between the images. Next up, we're gonna add some random attributes to the grass tile set. We want it to choose randomly between the two colors for the time being. For that, we are gonna also add a temporary script. This is gonna be much more complex in the future, but for now, we're just gonna name this assign textures. We're gonna do this very simple by adding a random variable, which is gonna equal to floor random of two, something like that. The floor function will basically drop everything to a round number. So floor random two can be a maximum of one and a minimum of zero. So now we can say if rand equals zero, we want the image index to be zero as well. So this is gonna be the darker texture, which we have had from the beginning. And if rand equals one, then we want the image index also equal one, and this will be the brighter texture we just created right now. Easy as that. Let's save that. And now we're going to continue with the trees. For this purpose, we're going to create a new sprite. We're gonna call this sprite trees. Edit it, new 64 by 64. And we're just gonna draw a simple tree image. Let's do a autumn tree, why not? Something like that. We're gonna take a bunch of circles. All the textures, of course, are temporary. We just need to have something to work with. So yeah, what do you think? That's not too bad for my first tree, is it? We're gonna add another image and right here we're gonna make more of a greenish tree. We're gonna do it in a similar fashion, just randomly placing down a bunch of circles. That seems to be all right. Make another tree stem, a smaller one with a bunch of roots maybe. I'm gonna fill this out. Perfect. So we have our two trees. I'm happy with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. So let's close this off. And of course we want to create an object for those trees as well. So let's call this object trees. Tessie? What? Trees? There we go. And assign the correct sprite. And if you remember, we have our tile textures on the depth of zero. So we want to make sure the trees are one level up. So minus one should make them visible above the tiles. Also for the trees, we have to do the same thing as for the tiles we just did. So maybe let's get over it and we're gonna copy the assigned textures and we're gonna paste them in right here. Just check if everything is fine. Yeah, we can use the same script, that's cool. Okay, now we only need to make sure that the trees actually spawn. Within the properties of the grass tile set, I want to add yet another script and I think I'm just gonna add the script over here. We're gonna call this script world generation. So this is different from the tile generation. We're gonna save that and we're gonna make sure that it is added in the creation event. World generation. Okay, perfect. Now we can close this off and we can work with the file right away. The way I have this planned, this world generation script is probably going to be a longer script. Fortunately for today, we can do it within just a few lines because mainly we want to get the trees inside the world and we want to be able to interact with them. So on the creation event of the object grass tile set, we want another random variable to be generated. Let's go with 100 because we can make percentage out of that. And of course, it has to be rand equals random 100. Rand is just my chosen variable name. So we can say if rand is lower than, for instance, 10, that would be a chance of 10%. Then we want an instance to be created, namely on the X and Y position of the tile itself, the object trees. So why don't we go ahead and test this out right away. We should now have a tree at least on every 10th tile. Seems to be good, yeah. The trees, as we can see, are still flickering between the two images, so that's something we'll have to correct. Oh yeah, of course, I'm a dummy. We actually have to set the image speed to zero as well. That's something I forgot to do. This is actually nonsense to do it outside of the script. We should do it right here. Image speed equals zero. Equals K? What? Zero. There we go. We're gonna do that for the object grass tile set as well. We're gonna remove this variable and put it inside the script here. So let's test the game again and hopefully this time we will have a tree on every 10th tile. From the looks of it that seems to be fine and they switch randomly between the green and the yellow one. But that is definitely not what I want to be going for. What I want to go for is something a little more interesting. So what we're gonna do is lower the percentage of a tree to spawn 
to about 1% only. Or maybe let's go even lower to half a percent. This will make sure that of course we are only getting on about every 200th tile one tree. And I'm gonna use these spots in order to generate small forests. So instead of having the trees spaced out relatively even, I want around the already existing trees to generate a few more trees so that it gives us the illusion to have a bunch of forested areas and other more open and grassy areas. But I think for today's video we have actually achieved enough. Again, keep your ideas and suggestions coming. Also let me know about improvements in the code I could make. And other than that, thank you so much for watching, have a great time and hopefully I'm gonna catch you the next time.